so many clients of mine come to me with uh, transgenerational um, traumas that they finally find a safe place to work on with me. Um, clients come with uh, addiction, addiction issues. Um, I have clients who experienced uh, sexual abuse, violence. There is talking part, so there is communication, conversation. There's also talking part through and from the body, so that's the somatic, ex um, somatic part of the therapy. Mm -hmm. Welcome to this new episode and today I am here with Emeshe. How are you? I'm a little nervous, but I'm alright. <laughs> Very nice. So Emeshe is a therapist specialized in transformational somatic psychotherapy. So that's very interesting. First of all, I'd like to ask you, what is your journey in life? I actually had a really difficult birth. Um, yeah, um, I had to receive blood transfusion immediately, mm -hmm. otherwise I would have died. And even after the blood transfusion, it wasn't sure that I'm not going to die. Uh, it was in the incubator for at least four days, I think. Okay, so that's quite a, a traumatic like, uh, birth experience. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. When I think of my birth experience, or once during a therapy session, it came up to me that my birth experience was sort of a heads up for what's coming later mm. in life. And, and I started to appreciate to have that experience and, and be able to learn from that. And, and just the fact that I survived it it's kind of, uh, kind of a big deal for a baby. Already as a child, I really loved to go away, to run away and to, to do different things than others are doing. One of the stories I heard from my mother was that I was about three or four when she went to the kindergarten to pick me up and I was already gone and then they found me at home. So. I already learned my way back home from the kindergarten when I was three or four years old. And there's an even earlier story when I was a couple of months old and my parents thought that they lost me or, well, I'm not sure they thought they lost me, but they couldn't find me. They were not expecting a baby to be gone, but then they found me in the river Danube just floating and enjoying myself. So, yeah, I guess that's a... That's a key aspect of my childhood, that I was quite independent. I was always fast. I was a fast learner, a fast thinker, a fast runner. Um, yeah, and I guess thinking back, uh, I was a bit lonely. Yeah, I was surely was a bit lonely. I don't remember having a whole lot of friends at school. I started to have more friends when I was at the university, and that was the time for me to to find myself and to be more myself and do the things I enjoy doing, like going abroad, traveling, exploring the world, uh, connecting to people from all corners of life and from all countries. Um, yeah, that was, that was a beautiful time for me to be at the university and be immersed in international communities and environments. It's like if I was searching for something not knowing what and just going to new places and checking it out if this is the place where I'm finding it and then moving again somewhere else. And it got more emphasized when I went to university and I joined two international student organizations and I started to attend and organize events all around Europe. And that was an amazing time of my life to interact with all sorts of different people from all the countries in Europe and that was when I really realized that uh, that's my path to, to keep discovering different cultures, different people, and that's going to help me to, to find what I'm searching for in my own life. What are you searching for? What am I searching for? I guess I was always searching for a home, and that's why all these Asian spiritual practices that I learned back home, and I learned even more when I came here, 
was so appealing to me because then I could find a home base, home space inside within myself. And it's a really lovely thought for me and it, it helps me feel anchored most of the time in my life when I think of myself of not really belonging to any country or not really belonging to any specific place then I need to search it inside myself and that's the way. And then uh, once you finish university did you start a normal uh, sort of job career or yeah, you, you were delving into self-inquiry <laughs> and psychology? Uh, my first degrees were the conventional normal one so I trained I was trained to be a researcher economist and later a data scientist um, therapy work and uh, and delving into self-inquiry and doing the compassionate inquiry training came just later um, for six years I was working in the banking sector doing the normal thing having a nine-to-five job burning out a couple of times not having a whole lot of fun and um, and that was eventually what led me to to take to take the work in myself more seriously mm -hmm. because I got to the point when when I just couldn't do that anymore like the normal life was was so horrible to to carry on that I decided to quit it and uh, I went to traveling again <coughs> traveling was always my thing to do whenever I had to had to run away, do something, change something. Like even during those six years when I was uh, at the banking sector, I often left my job and took three months break and went to another continent and just did my own things. But I always returned to do the normal things until uh, about three years ago um, when I left and I didn't go back. And that was when I started to get trained myself to be a therapist. So, what is uh, psychotherapy? Um, well, I first experienced psychotherapy as a client. Uh, I tried out uh, several approaches, a few different people, and uh, what was really close to me all the time when I had a therapist who was representing the relational approach in psychotherapy, which means uh, something different than in the mainstream. Uh, psychotherapy which is more of a behavior approach of giving a diagnosis that's more psychiatry or analyzing you I hated that I also hated as a client when the psychologist or the therapist was not really responding it was more like a blank slate and I was just talking talking and nothing really happened and So this is what I'm doing uh, as a therapist myself. I'm creating a relational container to the client, not to the client, between myself and the client. There is a specific type of therapy that uh, you are practicing now. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a somatic, relational, um, psychotherapeutic approach. Uh, it's called Compassionate Inquiry, the one I'm practicing right now. And it was developed by Dr. Gabor Mate and uh, Sabdaram Kerr. It was developed and created in, in Canada. Um, why do you like it so much? Why do I like it so much? Well, I had a long journey of uh, trying out different uh, psychotherapeutic approaches as a client. And I started researching to institutions, universities, places to start my own journey to become a therapist and somehow this one was really calling me to, to do that. Um, <clears throat> I guess the fact that it was created by two people who I could, I could accept as my teachers because that's been something uh, really challenging in my whole life to find people who are good enough teachers for me, who I can accept and respect and rely on their guidance. And the two humans, Gabor Mate and Saddam Kerr, who created Compassionate Inquiry, has so much experience and values that just drawn me to, to join the training they created together and with their colleagues together. 
Okay, okay, sounds very good. So, um, what are the benefits uh, to the client? So, if you have, uh, you know, clients that are yeah. particularly challenged, maybe they have some yearning for something or they feel a little bit on the sad side. I mean, what kind of clients do you work with and what are the benefits to them? Um, the clients I work with <coughs> so far, um, they have a lot of similarities to me. So many clients of mine come to me with uh, transgenerational um, traumas that they finally find a safe place to work on with me. Um, clients come with uh, addiction, addiction issues, which always goes back to childhood as a coping mechanism that developed into so-called addiction as an adult. Um, I have clients who experienced uh, sexual abuse, violence against them. So there's a quite wide range of, um, of manifestation of early childhood traumas. So it's hard to, hard to like pinpoint what kind of clients come to me or come to other um, therapists who are using compassionate inquiry approach. Um, believe it or not, it can help anyone because my strong belief and understanding is that anything that's uh, blocking us from being who we really are and having a content and joyful life comes from what happened to us in early childhood or at birth or before birth, depending on our beliefs and our memories. Yes, yes, uh, indeed. I think uh, zero to six years old or very early years are very extremely formative uh, for uh, a child's psychology and nervous system. Right? Yeah. And then trying to help later, it can be done obviously, but it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge, it's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. And that mm. leads me to um, my other passion to support families and work with children. Because just like you, I became very clear and studied as well how important it is to have a safe and emotionally supportive environment for children. And that's what brought me to uh, work with children here in Kopangan. Ah, oh yes, I remember you were uh, taking care of a group of children. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the best mm. times of my life to, to guide the development and create a safe, uh, safe place for children. It was beautiful. Very nice. Uh, so delving into uh, the therapy itself a little bit more. So is it, would you say is more of a talking therapy? And what are this, the somatic aspect of it? There is talking part. So there is communication, conversation. There's also talking part through and from the body. So that's the somatic, ex, um, somatic part of the therapy. Mm -hmm. um, the way I like to describe what I'm doing, um, Imagine me as your therapist, as your dive body, who's a very experienced diver, mm -hmm. which I am, by the way. And we are, dive we are going for a dive together. And you're the one who decide uh, at the beginning of the session where you want to go for a dive. And what is your intention with this dive? What would you like to find? What would you like to, to have when we are coming back up? To, to the surface, to the sunshine again. And I'm the person who's with you all the time and guiding you if you're, if you're needing guidance, steering you to the direction which I intuitively feel that's helping, supporting you to find what you set as an intention at the beginning of our diving journey. And we go as deep as you wish to go. Um, I really love to go very deep with my clients, but uh, what it takes time, it's always a process. With some clients, we can go back to early childhood trauma, birth trauma, and, and start healing it at the first session. With some people, it takes time. With some people, um, it might take a long time to, to connect to the body, and then that's how, that's how I can support them to just bringing them back to the body, to the wisdom of the body, to, to support them learn how to listen, how to connect to their own, to their own inner wisdom, because it's all, all in us. I also like to describe what I'm doing uh, in a way of uh, guiding someone out of the incarceration of their mind through the wisdom of their body into 
into the liberation and freedom and the joyful life they, they deserve. So there are many places in the world you can be based in. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Kapangan and uh, what are your plans here? Well, I love how you ask, why did I choose Kopangan? Because in a way I feel that, <coughs> feel that I didn't choose Kopangan, somehow it was chosen for me. Uh, when I was traveling, I already heard from many fellow travelers that, oh, there's an island in Thailand, what I think you would like. Um, and I came here about two years ago to do my first Vipassana retreat on the island. And I just couldn't leave. I just couldn't leave. Sticky island, Kopangan, you know, for sure. <laughs> and like all my hobbies I'm doing here, um, I love going to the waterfalls, I love going to, to the beaches, I love doing all the dance classes, ecstatic dance and all other dances. I really love the singing circles. Like, I can't really think of anything that I don't love in this island. The community, the warmth of the people, the kindness, and, and of course our Thai hosts. Like just yesterday, um, Mama Koi, um, not far from where we are sitting right now, she was offering me Thai food that her mom made. Just wanted to treat me with some, some amazing local homemade food. And, and just this mentality of the people to take care of each other and support each other. It's, it's just beautiful to experience. That's very nice. And with regards to your plans, are you going to be in Copangan or what's going on? Um, I'm going to be in Copangan. This is my home base now. Uh, I'm going to have a short travel uh, in a couple of months, but this is my home base. And just the end of this month, uh, a retreat is coming up. It's going to be a three days uh, uh, self-inquiry, trauma work and dance retreat so oh well that's the dance part as well <laughs> yeah there's going fun. to be dance part yeah yeah i don't remember mm -hmm. exactly but i think i'm calling the retreat um dance your way out of your traumas and that's really the mentality to get ourselves move connect to our bodies and from the wisdom of our bodies move through move through our shadows move through our blockages without ignoring them acknowledging them and moving through them and coming out, uh, dancing, enjoying each other's company, ourselves. Sounds lovely. So that's a, a lovely thing you're doing here in Kopangan. And uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, it's very interesting what you do. I think there's many people in Kopangan that do spiritual work and that do different kind of therapy. Uh, there are going to be some psychotherapists as well, but it's not as prevalent as, uh, you know, the other kind of modalities available on the island. So it's you know, interesting to have some, somebody that is, uh, you know, delving into psychotherapy as well. Thank you. Well, uh, Emisha, thank you very much for uh, this little chat. So thank I you, wish Sam. you best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.